Let's talk about situations where Monte Carlo simulations are most useful. Monte Carlo simulations are used in many different fields, such as finance, engineering, and physical sciences. In finance, they are used to simulate possible outcomes for a stock price, along with outcome probabilities over a certain period. They are also used in value at risk calculations, which calculate worst case scenarios, such as how much an investor stands to lose in a really bad month. Here, the most an investor expects to lose is $1,000 with 90% confidence. Monte Carlo simulations are also used in a variety of physical science applications, such as identifying protein binding sites. In engineering, the mechanical modeling of physical systems is often complicated by the presence of uncertainties. To assess reliability, Monte Carlo simulations are used to estimate probabilities of failure and to define domains of safety and failure. There are many benefits of utilizing Monte Carlo simulations. They take into consideration a range of values for various inputs. They show not only what could happen, but how likely each outcome is. They make it easy to create graphs that show the range of possible outcomes in a scenario. And finally, they allow us to examine what would have happened under different circumstances. Let's look at an example showcasing these benefits. We'll roll two dice chosen from two bags. The bags defined here contain three lists. Each list represents the six sides of a biased die. In this simulation, we pick one die from each bag randomly and roll both dice. If the roll adds up to exactly eight, we have a success. If not, it's a failure. We can use a Monte Carlo simulation to calculate the probability of success for each unique combination of dice. We start with a function called roll biased dice, which accepts n number of trials as an argument. The results dictionary records simulation results. For each trial, we generate four random numbers, bag index one for picking a random die from bag one, and die index one for sampling a random side of that die. We similarly define bag index two and die index two to get a random side of a die in bag two. Point one and point two are the points rolled from these two dice. We define a key variable that assigns a name to each combination of dice rolled. For example, if point one is three and point two is six, the key will be three underscore six. When points one and two add up to eight, we record the success in dice results, adding the key if it's not already present. Here's a look at the roll bias dice results with 10,000 trials. The table shows all the combinations of die points that create a success, along with the probability that each combination of points will occur given our biased dice. It is easy to visualize the summary data and the likelihood of all possible outcomes for the two bags of biased dice we defined earlier. It's also easy to examine different conditions. We can run the same simulation with two totally different bags of biased dice and visualize these outcomes as well. Of course, Monte Carlo simulations also have limitations. As the saying goes, all models are wrong, some are useful. For our models to be useful, we need to have fair assumptions. A model's output is only as good as its input. Monte Carlo simulations also tend to underestimate the probability of extreme events, such as the irrational behaviors sometimes exhibited by market participants in finance. Simulations need to be good mimics of the system of interest to produce relevant results. Let's move on to the exercises.